Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, so I hope you've all had a wonderful weekend. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what is circulating in regards to Megan and Taylor Swift. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of delve into a little bit of what I think is going on in regards to also the podcast. Um, I have touched on that, but I kind of want to go into a little bit more detail. Um, and for those of you who are asking, yes, don't worry, I will be talking about the potential Spencer name change in the next video. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss that. Um, yeah, lots to talk about. So if you don't know what to do by now, grab your drink of choice. And I'm not going to give you a list. So many of you have kind of said, you don't need a list. I hear you. I hear you. You don't need a list. So grab your drink of choice, whatever you decide. If you are like me, you might want to grab your cherries and berries because as you know, I love that. But if not, you grab what you think you would like to sit down, relax, or maybe it's five o'clock somewhere. So grab that drink and let's dive right in. So I hope you've all had a wonderful weekend. I know I've just said that, I repeat myself. Um, but as you can see, as promised, I am wearing my tiara that was sent to me for my birthday. <laughs> I actually love it. I think it's so cute. Let me just go in a bit further so you can kind of see how pretty this is. It's so pretty. Um, so thank you to the person who sent this. Um, you know who you are. Um, but yeah, so I'm officially, well, it's like my crown. I'm wearing my crown. <laughs> Never too old, ladies <laughs> or guys, to wear your crown. <laughs> um, or as my, yeah, as my cushion says, which my mum bought me, which says, whenever you are overwhelmed, remember whose daughter you are and straighten your crown. Quite right, mummy, quite right. Um, so, yes, so I'm sure by now many of you have seen circulated regarding the podcast that it has been cancelled. Um, really try not to do smiley face. Be professional, Ems, be professional. So just so you know, I'm going to be reading some notes um, because having the delightful menopause I forget things quite easily. So yeah, Spotify's podcast and Taylor Swift, or maybe should I say Megan and Taylor. Um, so what has been said is that around about the time Megan was deciding who she would like to have on her podcast, Taylor Swift was one of them. And so she decided to write a handwritten letter because we all know how much Megan does love a good letter. Um, and she wrote to Taylor and asked if she would like to be on the podcast. Taylor respectfully declined. Um, and of course, what's happening now is that the cult fan base as they do because they cannot stand anyone criticizing Megan. They really do not do Megan justice. I, I have to say, because I do feel that predominantly your fan base represent in a sense who you are as a person. And when you have a fan base that attacks, bullies, um, accuses of racism, accuses of hatred, if you so much as breathe in the wrong direction about Meghan Markle, that kind of says more about who you are than anything else. So when you have a fan base that is really hateful and really derogatory towards people, you kind of got to ask yourself, what does that say about you as a person, especially when you have publicly aligned with some of these people? Danny Trim was one particular member of the cult squad that they publicly endorsed. 
they said thank you to her. And she was one of the known ones, especially in the beginning, that went after people attacking and actually saying some horrendous things about the royal family and the royal family's children. Um, well, Cambridge's children. So you kind of got to say, hmm. So, of course, this cult fan base, which is probably five people, probably Megan's five friends or alter egos and the bot farm have gone after Megan. No, sorry, have gone. <laughs> It'd be nice if they did, but no, um, they've gone after Taylor. Um, excuse me a second. I just want to go. I'm just going to endorse my new fan. Look at this. And it's now, I did pay for it myself, by the way. I have, no one bought it for me. Um, but I have to say, this is the best find. The best find on Amazon. Um, and look, I'm going to show you. I'm sorry, I'm digressing here. I will get back to the, the point in hand. But it has four little things and it's lovely. But if you press this down, it sprays. You can see on the camera, it sprays a little mist of cold water this i have to say has been an absolute godsend for anyone and it's not expensive for anyone that is going through or wants just something for this warm weather honest honestly i, I tell you and it's got a little battery on it that tells you um where are we so it tells you that's actually 50 not 20 it looks like 20 in the thing but it, i'll just sprayed water on the camera <laughs> honest, honestly <laughs> It's a wonder I'm still going. <laughs> um, yeah, so it sprays water and then you just literally ooh, turn it off. It's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I love it. It's on Amazon and I will put the link in the description box below. So anyway, yeah, so they've gone after, ta uh, they've gone after Taylor, which I think is a huge mistake because Taylor's fans are so loyal so loyal and she has millions and then you've also got the fact that she's very very good friends best friends even with selena gomez and other celebrities um one of them being um blake lively who is reynold uh, ryan reynolds wife um so you have these sort of multiple huge fan bases that will collectively come together to defend taylor so I think this is a huge mistake. And like I say, they just, you know, they just don't do her justice. So I want to talk a little bit about this because I want to go into a little bit of the timeline on this um, podcast and kind of have a chat about what I think kind of happened. So they left the big dramatic Megxit in 2020. Um, and I have spoken about this. I've said before that I think this was an accumulation of Megan getting caught out doing multiple things. I think there was the lie that was surrounding Archie. They couldn't stay in the UK. So I think they had to leave. I don't think they left voluntarily because if you think about it, people who leave voluntarily that are happy to go, happy to no longer be part of the royal family, would not have behaved the way they have, wouldn't have attacked the royal family every which way possible, wouldn't have kept with the titles. They would have been like, you know what, we're going off on our own. We don't need the royal family. We don't need the titles. Where, And do you know what, they probably would have got more deals and, and, and probably a little bit more if they'd have gone on and be, gone out there and been sensible and actually been decent human beings. Um, but they didn't. So anyway, so they, they did this whole dramatic leaving thing um, in June, uh, January 2020. And then suddenly, obviously, we went into lockdown with the worldwide bug in March 2020. And they did not bank on this. Well, nobody did, to be fair. Well, it depends which way you swing on that. But anyway, so they didn't bank on this. So, of course, this is around the time when everything become introverted. Everything went online. You know, people, you know, celebrities were not going out. There was no film premieres. There was nothing being done, no work, no acting, no nothing, apart from maybe the odd later on, it started to kind of ease up a little bit. Um, but in the beginning, it was literally, boom, shut down everything. So, of course, what I think then was Spotify and, and, and probably streaming giants like Netflix probably thought, OK, we need to capitalise on this. And, and it's horrible to think that they would do that, but they're a business. And so like with most businesses, they don't want to lose business. So it's kind of like, okay, we need to capitalize on this. What can we do? 
And obviously around this time, Harry and Meghan were still seen as maybe bankable. Um, and so I think they, Spotify probably thought, haha, we could probably get them in and we can, they're going to bring in the big bucks because they probably assumed back then that when this was going to start happening, that they would have had a lot of interest. Um, the problem being is that when they signed up to this $20 million deal, which was going to be both of them, if you remember in the beginning, you know, when they first advertised it, it was going to be both of them. Um, and I think they did their first one, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was February. Might be wrong, but it wasn't long after they signed the deal. They did their very first little advert for it, where they come on together, making it seem like, oh, we're just, everyone's connected and we're going to talk about real world issues. Um, really making it seem like it was, they were just going to do their humanitarian work and they're just connecting people and talking about their problems and blah, blah, blah. Um, feedback from that wasn't great, but it wasn't like terrible, but people would, I mean, people, people like us were like, yawn. But still, they got good feedback from the media and, and everywhere else. Um, then I think, correct me if I'm wrong again, but then they, uh, and this was, so they signed in December 2020, right? So they decided, they signed in 2020. So then the first one was February 2021, just making sure I'm getting the timeline right. Um, and in the first one, of course, they enlisted Tyler Perry and Elton John because um, um, it feels like they're the only two people that actually um, wanted to go on there. And at this point they were, you know, Tyler was still speaking to them because I have I have a theory on Tyler Perry. Um, and I think Elton would possibly go to the opening of a paper bag, in all honesty. Um, and then around 10 months later, they released another podcast, which was in the December. So this is one podcast they've done in a year one since kind of signing up no actually more is it more than a year because they sign up in no just over a year so they sign up in december 2020 and then december 2021 they do their second one so the first one had mm, not didn't get the best reviews i would say um people said it was a bit dull a bit predictable um just talking with celebrities again and so of course what do they do they in the second one, they reel out alleged Archie. And of course, the fan base lap this up because apparently this was the first time anyone publicly had heard Archie speak. What I found really odd was that nobody picked up on the fact that the first time they actually get their child to speak publicly is for their podcast, which is making them money. So for, in all intents and purposes, merching their child, which, like I've said before, is classic narcissism. But do you not find it weird that Archie was born in 2019 and yet in the whole of two years, and this is why I've said before, this is why there is something very hinky going on with these children, because why are the media not the media pull apart everybody? They have apparently pulled apart Megan. They are they've been they, they can be vicious when they want to. And they will even criticize people being parents. But yet not one word is said about the fact that Harry and Megan have not shown their children in a normal setting for two years. We've not had, you know, where we see um, the Cambridge children come out and there's conversations, like they're interviewed and, you know, they, they, they've done cute little things where you hear them speaking or there's just, there's just something. They interact. You can see these are real life children. With Harry and Meghan, we've had none of that. So for two years, we've not had a single thing Aside from the footage in the very, very beginning with Duck, Duck, Rabbit, and I will do more about that, um, nothing, absolutely nothing. 
no little video of them talking or anything and this is like i say this is bearing in mind this is around the time of when this come out so the first time they release anything to do with their alleged child it's on a podcast which makes them money and yet nobody picked up on that it's like that's merching your children to gain views for your podcast well you know listening views um and nobody picks up on that everyone was like no oh, this is so cute this is archie and again people some people not us and people that kind of they've got their brain screwed in um don't quite understand you know their fat their cult fan base is that we didn't see who this child was just because you've got a child that's voicing mum dad or fun or whatever the the happy new year and you're being told this is archie doesn't mean it is you know that could be anyone's child that that's that's done that um so yeah so that that was the first thing i think that i was just like hang on a minute you're lit you're literally using your child because you probably didn't get that many views and you know it's it's bombing so why don't we just reel out our child on the podcast to make people tune in um and i thought that was pretty pretty atrocious i mean it's classic narc behavior if i'm honest using um children for clout and so then we have nothing after that i think nothing if i recall um and of course and then of course they reel in out and again and then james corden you know it's all the all the, the the familiar people that are probably in on the bs that they've got going on um and then there was nothing until august 2022 where suddenly it's not harry and megan anymore it's just megan and the whole thing has changed and it becomes archetypes which is odd given that she talks about stereotypes so what i suspect is she didn't get it wrong because a lot of people said oh she got it wrong megan might be many things but she's not stupid her their uh fake charity whatever you want to call it is called archerwell archetypes i think was a play on it being um archiewell um but also because she wanted to if you think about archetypes what does archetypes mean so let's think about this for a second so what does archetypes mean i'm going to refer to google here because um when i was actually talking just now <laughs> i actually forgot what archetypes mean i'm literally having a brain fart so I just had to quickly Google what archetypes means. Um, just being completely transparent and honest with you here. So you don't think I'm a brainiac and I like know everything. Um, so archetype um, is a type of character who represents a universal pattern and therefore appeals to our human collective unconscious. So someone that's important in life. Um, for example, a hero. If you could have a character that was a hero that would be an archetype and then what else it is it's the original uh pattern or model of all the things of the same type so basically it's the original it's the archetype the original um like say if someone was doing something and they they would design something it's like but there's an original so the archetype is the original so basically in a sense it's the original the one that's the most important so think about that not only as megan got archie well she then says archetypes and of course a lot of people have kind of gone well she's saying it wrong it's not archetypes it's stereotype but now when you think of archetype what do you think of do you think of oh the true meaning of what archetypes is or do you automatically think megan's podcast and what does megan see herself as a visionary the original the one that's the most important. So I think she did this on purpose. I don't think this was, she's forgotten what stereotype means and has said it wrong. I absolutely think 
she did this on purpose because it's a play on, in a sense, Archer well, because it starts in the same way. And I think she sees herself as a visionary, as somebody who is changing the world, someone who's the original uh, person who's just going to create so much change. And, and I think that's how she sees herself. Her ego is, and, and I'm not kidding you, her ego is that huge. So when people say, oh, I don't think that she will do this, it, it may be that she won't succeed, like in a sense, she's not succeeding, but she's very tenacious and she believes that she can do it. She believes that she can be successful. And the, 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 the irony is, if she was actually a nice person, this would be celebrated. If I was talking about somebody who was actually a really lovely person that was a humanitarian, that went out there and did all those things and just didn't let things knock her down and actually and didn't use people and tread on them along the way. You would celebrate a person that like that, a woman or a man, no matter who it was, you'd be like, Do you know what? Good for you. Well done. But what her fan base seemed to fail to understand is the reason she is so disliked and becoming more disliked is because of how disingenuous she is. She manipulates, she lies, she uses people. More and more things are coming out of where she bullies people. She speaks horribly about people. And not only that, you can see how Harry has declined. Now, I'm not saying that she's solely responsible for Harry because Harry is an adult. And even as a therapist, I can tell you now that when you work with people, um, you get them to take responsibility for their own actions. Because if you sit there and enable somebody to blame everybody else, they're never gonna heal, they're never gonna get better because they're never gonna look at themselves, they're never gonna, never gonna have that introspection to say, you know what, I need to take accountability. You know, there might be reasons that have led me to being this way, but as soon as I have that awareness, like Harry pertains to have, like he, he talks about things and says that, you know, he was aware of some of these things, well, with that awareness, you've only then got yourself to blame if you do nothing with that. And Harry isn't. So as much as I think Meghan has led him, uh, well, not led him, but I think she's manipulated this side of him. Because I, I, like I've said, I do believe that side of him has always been there. But she knows exactly what she's doing. She's not stupid. And this is why I think Archetypes was intentional. She calls it that. That is why she tried to patent it. She wanted it to be hers. If you didn't think, if this was, say, a mistake or whatever, A, she would have rectified it, and B, she wouldn't be trying to patent it. And thankfully, that's been refused. Because it's very similar, apparently, to another business. And not only that, it's already a word defining, in the, in the English language dictionary, it's already defined by, by something. So you can't then take that and re, re, redo it into yours, that makes zero sense. Oh, it's a lovely breeze. Um, and so I'm really glad about that. But this is how big her ego is. She actually believes that she can do that. She actually believes that she can take that word and make it hers. And that that's why I say, whenever you think of archetypes now, you don't think what the English dictionary tells you it is you'll probably go straight to, because I know I do, if, I, if anyone mentions the word archetype, straight away what pops into my head is Megan's podcast. So she's not stupid. I mean, all right, it's not, it's not gone in her favour, but she's, she's not. She's very manipulative. I do believe she knows what she's doing, or she believes she knows what she's doing. However, the problem you have with somebody like Meghan Markle is that her ego gets in her own way. So whereas she thinks she knows best, when she's working with people that do know best, she won't listen to them. And this is why she fails at everything. She has to constantly rebrand herself. If you were just naturally a lovely person and you were secure in who you are, you don't have to rebrand yourself. You are just who you are. And if something doesn't work, you pick yourself up, you try something again. You don't have to rebrand who you are. No offence, but look at, I mean, I, I don't like comparing and doing that. But let's be honest, let's look at Catherine. Not once has Catherine rebranded herself. She may have changed her style of clothing, but we all do that at some point. What worked for us back then doesn't necessarily work for us or, you know, we just change as people. But she's fundamentally stayed the same person throughout. 
what you see is what you get. And there has been nobody that has ever called into question Catherine's character, not one that I've ever seen. The problem you have nowadays is because things are getting hidden, it's easy for the cult fan base to kind of go, oh, well, the media manipulates it. The me media always talks wonderfully about Catherine. Um, the royal family always put out the positive PR with Catherine. But as I remind them, a, that wasn't always the case, because if the royal family were so hell-bent on creating positive PR and pushing Harry and Meghan under the bus, which is what they would say, then what about all the negative press that we've seen? The negative press about Camilla, the negative press about Charles, the negative press about Diana, the negative press about Catherine, the negative press about all of them, Andrew even. If, if, they, were, if they were wanting to create this bubble of the royal family being so perfect why are we seeing all the negative press especially even like say about Andrew that paints the royal family a terrible light they could have squashed that maybe I don't know but they didn't now do they probably squash some things yeah but we do know that they've squashed some things about Harry his cocaine use oh can I say that publicly his white powder use um probably too late now i've said it um you know so there and probably a lot of other things and we also know that a lot of things were scrubbed about her and that's what i think i think because harry and Meghan know this is what the family can do they know that things can get scrubbed because they have seen it firsthand regarding harry First hand regarding Megan. So then they can use that to say, well, they must have done lots of other things. So this archetypes thing, I think, also was around the time when, and I've been saying this for quite some time, over a year in fact, that they're not together. So this makes sense to me that they leave, they go to Canada, then they move to LA and they she's still acting like everything's great they start this podcast and then at some point around that time things fall apart but they've got commitments they sign this contract but rather than do it together what i would probably imagine is that they've actually gone to spotify and said okay we can't do this together they probably come up with some reasoning Megan is going to take this herself. I imagine Spotify probably weren't too happy about that, but they probably pitched it in such a way that made it seem that everything was going to be great, that Megan was going to draw in this huge crowd. And for the first one, she did. It was, so the numbers say, it was huge. But as we've discussed, it was big because everyone wanted to see what she was going to say. It wasn't huge because we all adore her and we were wanting to support her and tune in she had a select fan base and then we had people like us youtubers not me I'm gonna hand put my hand up and say i did not do it have one second hello arthur arthur's back from his walk hello bubba did you have a nice time did you have a nice time let me get the chicken in a minute coming up um Say hello. Come on, help me get. Oi. Are you being all weird? Arthur, come here. Come here. I'll get your chicken in a minute. Come here. Oh, he's now falling over a box. Oh, God, he's honestly. Um, so, yeah, he's not saying hello today. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that that is why it was as popular as what it pertained to be because you had journalists tuning in. Anyone that reports on them was tuning in to listen to see what, what she wanted to say. And that kind of stayed the same probably for the first sort of few episodes. And then it waned because she was, people were kind of like, well, she's just doing the same thing. She's talking about herself. Um, she's not really that interesting. Um, it's quite boring. And so it waned. And, and then she did, what, six episodes and then or however many it was and then nothing. And then, of course, it's coming out now that she didn't actually interview all of them. So, what, again, what I think she did was she interviewed Andy Cohen. She interviewed uh, Paris Hilton, Serena, Mariah. Um, and I think maybe that's it. Well, of course, we know the reason why she interviewed those, because 
she's a grifter and um, because she probably thought if I interview Andy Cohen and even though she kind of almost set him up because she interviews him and then afterwards talks in the narrated bit beforehand she talks about the negative impression that is it the the house the hot I don't know the housewives of something um that the negative impression this has on women but she never once said that in the interview. So he was pretty annoyed when it came out that this little narr narration bit beforehand. Um, and she says that it's actually really quite negative against women. And he's like, hey, what? Hang on. You never said any, you didn't say any of that in the discussion. Um, but she used that because she was probably sitting there thinking that Andy Cohen was going to give her a part on one of her, one of his projects. Um, Paris Hilton connection. If I can get friends with Paris Hilton, it's a connection. Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey is huge in the music world and has a huge fan base. Let's capitalise on that. Serena Williams, I think, was probably you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of thing because Serena Williams was promoting her book at the time and she just retired. So it was kind of like, well, I'll advertise you and you come on and you're just a name. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that and yet anyone else got interviewed by her staff. Well, because they weren't going to benefit her. She's a grifter. And the amount of times that we've said this and if people just actually, well, thankfully, they're starting to wake up now and see that, that she will use who she can, when she can, which is what she's done with everybody. And then when she's finished with them, she dumps them gone, which is why I would say that Harry and Meghan at the minute have this kind of uh, like officially on paper we're together, but actually we're not. They come together when they need to do something. The fact that he turns up and supports her um, like at the Hertz um, award thing. <laughs> um, and you can see how, like I say, how stressed he was in the car. So I don't believe actually he knew that was, I think she set that up. Um, and regardless of the court case, but where was she supporting her husband? Where was she? Where was the Happy Father's Day post? You know, we had the beautiful picture with Prince William come out. He had his birthday. Nothing. Oh, but when, but when, but oh, he, but they got attacked because they didn't wish Harry, um, Harry a Happy Father's Day or a Happy Birthday or whatever it was. But th they don't. They didn't wish Lily or Archie a happy birthday, but yet they don't wish them a happy birthday either. So this, this is just how petty it is in regards to their cult fan base. Um, so, yeah, so I think I think this was all set up in a way to create her to rebrand herself again. And this is what she will do. She will keep on doing. She will keep doing this if people if there's interest there. Um, and I think, if I'm honest, I think Elton used Harry. I've said that in one of my other videos in regards to the court case. Um, and I think he's probably got some loyalty to Harry. But what's interesting is that he doesn't seem to be showing any loyalty to William, which I think is pretty um, pretty mean. Because So I, that, that creates me to think that Elton is just using Harry and there's not really anything else. Because if you had that loyalty you'd be loyal to both brothers but you're not um and then you have tyler which who has suddenly gone very very quiet and so the but the rumors are that he found out about the lie that was lily's christening something happened at Lil this alleged lily's christening and we know this was a lie because they put out there about the Spencer family, uh, the Spencer sisters coming and they didn't. Um, so, and I know that people have said, but how come the, is it the, the bishop? Correct me if I'm wrong. I apologise if I've said it wrong. But the, the person who was, who did the christening, why did he, surely, you know, he had, he wouldn't lie. Um, now, I'm not saying that, but... If you turn up somewhere, I mean, it just a, it seemed very odd because a lot of people, myself included, picked up on the fact that this was a, this is a religious ceremony. It's a christening, but it was done in their garden, which seemed a bit odd. Um, but he doesn't know. Nobody really knows what Lily looks like. So if he turned up and there's this child there, um, 
you know, he's he's going to think that is that is the child. Um, and 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 I know that people say, well, you know, like I mean, I'm, I am being, you know, I have been accused of being a conspiracy theorist, um, and that's fine. You believe what you want. I don't mind. I don't really don't because I'm I'm like I say, if I'm wrong, I'll be the first person. I'm not ashamed enough to go. Oh, you know, I'm embarrassed or no, I'll, I'll just be like I was wrong. But I don't believe I am wrong. Um, I trust my instincts and I trust my eyes and what I see and what I feel. And I absolutely believe that these children um, do not exist in the way that we're being told they do. Um, and I've said this, I think Archie is here in the UK. I think I do think he's Harry's. He's got Harry's DNA, but I don't think he's Megan's at all. Um, and I have found some interesting footage um, and I will do a video on that next week. I'm going to talk about the Spencer situation in the next video, but next week. So stay tuned for that. So I'm going to do another more in-depth video in regards to the children um, because other stuff, as other stuff comes up, I put it here. Um, so, yeah, and I think that Lily was, well, I'm going to save that for the next video. So just going to keep your weight in there. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think regarding the name archetypes? Do you align with my thoughts and the fact that this was intentional? Um, uh, and in a way, a marketing strategy, I think, like I say, the fact that she wants to patent it and that's thankfully been denied. Uh, the whole Taylor Swift situation. Um, you know, obviously I'm not on Twitter, so I don't know if any of you guys are on Twitter. Are you seeing anything circulating on Twitter? Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know as always. Um, so again, thank you so much for the love and support. Thank you for <laughs> letting me sit here with my crown on. <laughs> um, I will be doing more videos. I'm, I have spoken to my son and he said that he will do some more videos, little intros for me. So they will come up sporadically. I won't be doing them on every one because the poor guy, he's working, trying to run his own channel. Um, so he will do some periodically. And so I will dot them in every now and again, um, just as a little surprise for you. Um, but thank you to, for all the love and support. I really do appreciate it. You've all been amazing. Um, and like I say, I'm, yeah, I'm very grateful to you, all, all of you. you. You're just amazing. It, so it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Um, subscribe if you don't want to miss future uploads. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my other channel, my therapy channel, I will be getting back to that and doing more videos on that. All the links are in the description box below. If you would like to treat me to a cuppa because you've enjoyed this video or you can drop me a little super chat, I really appreciate it. If you want to ask me a question within the super chat, I'm deciding that if you want to ask me a question, you want it to go up on the channel. Uh, so once a month, I'm going to be choosing a few questions from the super chats um, that you want answered up on the channel publicly um just to give you a little thanks for so you don't miss um so you don't feel missed should i say um so yeah so as always i love you i appreciate you but most of all i respect you take care bye bye Mwah.